recently had a request on how to replace the horns on an E46. I want to go over some testing that you can do as well and some other things that it could be besides the horns themselves. Most of the time it is actually the horns, <clears throat> but you will want to check a couple of fuses as well. So we have fuse 5 here and fuse 55 over here. This is a 5 amp, this is a 15 amp over here. You do have a horn relay and this is the working side here. It goes through your volute spring, which is actually the slip ring on the steering wheel. And then this is actually the horn contact switch, which is when you press down on uh, the airbag, it will press down and close these contacts. And then uh, actually the other part of this also is through the volute spring. So you could have a problem with the horn contact or a problem with the slip ring, which would prevent the relay from activating. And you should have power to your relay and when this is activated the relay closes and it provides power to the horns. Now the easiest way to check this would be to disconnect the horns and you have pin 1 and 2 and pin 1 and 2. There's two different wiring diagrams by the way so I'm going to go over both. So you could put a voltmeter on pin 1 positive, pin 2 negative, press your horn inside the vehicle and you should see voltage appear on your connector and that's how you can diagnose whether this is a voltage problem to the horn or if it's a horn the horn itself also if you have one working horn you can swap it from side to side Oops. now this is the other wiring di diagram and they have a couple things in common and a couple things that are different the fuses are actually the same so you want to check fuse 5 which is a 5 amp and fuse 55. Both of these are going to be in the glove box. They still have that same relay. Um, I think the pins here are different on this side. For this, it's still going to go through the volute spring. And if I go down, there's the horn switch and there's the volute spring. And over here on the right are the horns. Now it's only one wire supplying power to both pin 5 violet and blue wire and this goes to pin 2 on the left horn and also pin 2 on the right horn so again you'd want to check for voltage here at each horn between the two pins while somebody holds down the horn switch at the, the steering wheel itself if you see voltage, you know the horn is bad. Let me also move on to showing you where the relay is located. Now it would be nice if you could actually you could actually ground the relay right here, which is the working side, and that would close that, and you could check power. But the relay itself is not an easy to get to. So let me pull up a picture of the relay location. So it's actually behind the glove box. The glove box isn't super hard to remove, but it is a bit of a process when most likely it is the horns that are bad. But just in case you need to go to the relay for testing, that's going to be the relay right there behind the glove box. Let me see, I had a couple other pictures of the horn. This is the left hand horn. They actually located in the left hand front wheel housing. And then we also have the right horn, which is located in the right wheel housing. So you can see that you're going to have to access this area. This is the receiver dryer, I believe, for the AC system. And there, here's our horn right here. Um, something else you could do is remove the horn and uh, supply it power and ground. And it, if it's good, it should actually sound. Let's start in the glove box. So you can have two tabs. Twist these to open up and have access to the fuse panel. This is a neat tool right here. This is actually a tool for removing fuses. So we'll pop that out. And if your vehicle still has it, you have this card that has your fuses on them. Now, the 
double check that for the horn. It's fuse 5 and 55. Right there. So the wiring diagram I was looking at is correct. I'm going to go over a couple things to check real quick. I have a voltmeter and test light. Both are pretty easy to use. I'm going to show both just in case you only have one or the other. I have a jumper lead that just goes to the engine ground point. You need to find a good ground. Um, you can use the door jam over here, but it's usually not the best ground. So I actually went around to the ground point, which is in the left side um, bulkhead area. This is actually the ground for if you're jumping the vehicle. It's actually a little dark in there, but that's it right there. So I know I have a good ground. Use the test light first. So I'm going to hook up the clamp end to ground. And then I can just use the test light to go to fuse 5 and 55. Now the key is off, so I don't expect to see voltage here. Yep, nothing. Nothing, and you have to remember to check both sides. Grab my key. Okay, key on. I want to check fuse 5. Just this one right here. Should light up a test light. Yep, you can see it's glowing right there. Make sure to check both sides. Yep, and fuse 55, which is, let's see if I can see that. Five right there, right here, right next to that 30. So check both sides. You know, if you ever have a weird problem, it doesn't hurt to take a test light and just work your way around the fuse panel. Also look for spots that have two connectors. Like right here I have power even though there's no fuse. And above it, it's empty. So you know actually a fuse doesn't go there, but a few times I had some cars come in with some strange problems, pop open the glove box, and sure enough there's a fuse completely missing. I know my fuses are good, but I'm going to switch to a voltmeter. So you can verify now, a test light, if it has good amperage, should light it nice and bright. But it's nice to see what the actual voltage is. So I'm going to take my jumper lead and attach it to the negative side of my cables, which goes to my voltmeter. I'm going to set it right now. I'm actually on ohms. I was ohming out uh, the wiring for the outside temp sensor yesterday. So I want to switch that to volts DC. Make sure it's turned on. And I can double check. On each side, 11.64. Gotta throw a charger on this, 11.69. And then fuse 55 with this 15 amp one. This blue one right, Let's see if I can get in there so you can see, right here. Eleven point six eight. And eleven point six eight again. So you know your fuses are good. Let's move on to the actual horns. Now let's take a look at the right side horn. Now on this vehicle that I've purchased, it had these covers broken. There's a piece actually right there. So you're gonna have, if your vehicle's still intact, a cover that's part of the wheel well, just like this. So it's gonna be held on by these eight millimeter screws. So you have to take these screws off here. You have to take them off around the perimeter here. And then this panel has a clip that's held on right here. So you have to take this panel off. It helps if you jack the vehicle up. I have this one up in the air. Because to get to the horn, the horn's located right there. 
So there's that uh, metal reinforcement piece for the front bumper and there's my horn and there's my wiring for the horn. Now this is on the right side. I also have the wheel turned so I can access that better. So I have the key in the ignition so I can go ahead and turn these wheels without locking the steering wheel. Let's take a look at the horn on this side. There it is tucked up in that same area. Is that held on by a zip tie? <laughs> no, no, this still has a bracket there. I think the bumper's held on by a zip tie. Obviously I didn't buy this vehicle in the best of shape, but uh, it's uh, been a great vehicle for making videos to help people to uh, fix their E46 3 Series. So I can actually get to the connector pretty well on this one. There's my connector right there. Well, you know, I have not even checked if the horn works. So, let's find out. I'm kind of curious. When I press on this, basically we would create the contact here, which would then, um, through the volute spring, um, activate the relay, which would supply power to the horns. Oh, sounds like. I don't know if it sounds like only one of them's going off, or, it's, or if it's both. So it does work. So we should see voltage there when I press on this. Okay, so removing the horn would probably be the best way to do this, and it's not very difficult once you have this panel removed here. It's just held on by this one. 10 millimeter nut right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. I'm actually not going to disconnect the wiring on it. I'm going to leave that connected. Now you have to take it off here even though there's another bracket because that other bracket is what mounts the horn to this frame and you really can't get to that other side without taking the bumper off and that reinforcement piece. Okay, so I got the nut off there. Okay, with that out, I should be able to lift up this horn. There it is. And finagle it out. It should make testing a lot easier. In most, most cases, you can replace it. Oop, my connector came right off. Push this out. Okay. Here's the horn right here. You can see it's held on by that bracket. And here's the back side. Now we get to the fun part, which is checking for power at the connector and we can bench test the horn. Let's bench test the horn because it'll be more fun. Inside here is actually going to be two male pins. Um, you can carefully use like two wires and you know make sure they don't touch together. You're going to need power and ground to bench test this. Um, so I could use the jump terminal up under the engine compartment. I have this airbag test cable that I use quite often. This is, if you're curious, um, something you could purchase from BMW. Um, it's an airbag repair harness. I'm not sure if I can get the part number here. Jeez, um, I think I only have part of a part number. 209, nope, let's try, I think 838-6329. But this is what it would look like. And it usually comes with both male side pins and female side pins. I do have to strip a couple of wires off or the sheathing off the back of this because I did cut it the other day to use one side of it by itself. So let me strip this back a little bit so I can jump this. Okay. Do the other side. Quick. Okay. 
Okay. So now I'm going to take the two female side pins and I'm going to put them into the connector end. If I can see in there, I have to get another flashlight. Alright, so using a light, you usually can see in there so that you can line up these pins. They're going to slide right over the connector, or right over the pin rather. And my other side. I want to make sure these don't touch together because I'm not putting a fuse in this. I'm going to go direct power. Make sure these stay separate. Oops. Oh man. Let me get myself situated here. So I'm going to have to hook that up. Power and ground. Too much wiring. There's my power and ground. Alright, I'm ready to bench test this now. I did tape this one right here so that it made better contact. This one's resting right inside on those two pins. Here's the horn. This is the jump terminal right here. So I have the other two ends stripped out. It actually doesn't really matter which way I go with this. So I'm going to go to positive and then right here on the strut tower. And this is how I can check it. And this is just an easy way to verify if the horn does actually work. This is the wiring for the horn. One wire is brown and I can't tell in the light what the other one is, but this is the other end of that uh, airbag wiring harness test kit with the male side pins, which this just makes a really great way to do some quick tests because these usually fit in most connectors just like this. And then I have the other end just open So I have two pins in here and my wiring comes up to my voltmeter and I just have the ends wrapped around the voltmeter like so. Turn my voltmeter on and I'm not going to see anything obviously until the switch is, is actually pressed. Tell me where to put it. You got it bud. Alright so I enlisted the help of my son. Do you want to say hi? to everybody who's in the driver's seat. And uh, Tommy's three, and he's gonna go ahead and press the horn switch for me, and we're gonna see if we can see some voltage here. Go ahead and press it and hold it. Make it beep. Whoa, I saw 14 volts there. Press it again. Nice. So you're verifying the horn switch works through the relay all the way through the wiring to verify that your horn is actually the one that is the, the horn is the one that's the problem. Now, as you can see, the other horn is sounding, so it actually, both horns is, uh, actually are going off on my vehicle. I thought maybe one was bad. Um, they just sound a little weak. But uh, that's basically it. On the other side is gonna be the same testing. You have that, uh, that 10 millimeter nut that's holding on the horn. If you do have to replace the horn, I'm pretty sure that this bracket is not going to come with it. So you do have to swap this over. This is a 13 millimeter. So take note of where it sits in location to the connector. Because I don't think there's a locator on this. So there it is right there. At least for the right side. So this breaks free. So that does come off. What's nice is usually on an older car, it's going to be a pattern so you can see where it was. So if, when you replace the horn, lay them side by side, look at the pattern so you can line this up. It doesn't have to be exact exact. You want it close. Put that 13 back on. It's 
So I get down, and my fingernail got busted at work, moving a box around. There we go. So, snug that down, make sure it's good and tight. I think I'm off a little bit, but I think it should go in fine. Installing it. Slide it in. Find that hole that it was just into. And the stud ends is right there. Put the nut back on. Again, that was a 10 millimeter. That hole through my bumper is where a fog light should be, which makes it a little easier for me to do this. Without, oh, actually, that's not the right spot. That's an extra hole right there that I put it into. It needs to go put the second one over. That would work, but. That's not where it came from. I gotta go one more over. This way. There it is. There it is. That's where it was. Like that. Get that nut on there now. I had to move the recorder over. I guess it was right in the way. Right. The right way, yeah. So you have to put that bracket on first and then go ahead and snug it down. There. When you get close to it being snug, you can position it. Now you can also plug it in before you install it. You can see that's the connector end right there. Might make it a little bit easier. Yeah, it's floating nice right there. I like that location. I moved that bracket just a little bit. So I didn't like the way it sat. Now it's floating up above that bracket nice. And my connector. and install the wiring on it and obviously you want to make sure everything is clear you would have to install that plastic panel um, I don't have one on this obviously because it's completely busted this front bumper is basically falling apart that's the location of the horn and same thing on the right hand side you can do the exact same tests it is very common for horns to fail both at the same time for whatever reason so a lot of times people think that, you know, how could it be both my horns went, they just tend to both fail sometimes at the same time. But you can test each one individually, test voltage to the wiring, you can bench test a horn, now you know where the relay is, you have the wiring diagrams, so you should be in pretty decent shape to uh, get that horn fixed. Good luck to you, hope this helps.